Hello, this is Jana, and welcome to Story Nori. I am back with a Jataka tale, which is a fable in the Buddhist tradition. As you may know, Buddhism is one of the great religions of Asia, and its founder is known as the Buddha. These tales usually involve animals and teach morals. What sets them apart is that one of the characters is often the Buddha himself in one of his earlier lives. Buddhism teaches that the Buddha was born many times, sometimes as an animal, and sometimes as a wise advisor to the king. When he is in one of his earlier forms or incarnations, he is known as the Bodhisattva. Damsel the Elephant. Once upon a time, in the holy city of Benares in India, there lived a king who owned an elephant with a smile so charming, he named her Damsel. Damsel was the height of loyalty, always nodding in obedience, always calm and even tempered. She never so much as stepped on a bug. One night, a crew of thieves held a secret meeting inside Damsel's stall. They thought that they had found the perfect hideout for discussing their grand plans of burgling houses, palaces, and maybe even a matiai store. Matiai are Indian sweets, by the way. Little did they know, Damsel, with her impressively large ears, was eavesdropping on their entire conversation. The eldest thief, who fancied himself a professor of thuggery, would educate the recruits on the art and science of crime. Here's a snippet of his eloquent lecture. Now listen up, lads. When tunnelling into a house, you must make it as clean and as straight as the road leading up to the king's palace. And when doing a bit of lifting the goods. Don't hesitate to commit murder now and then. After all, dead men don't tell no tales. And so the thieves, completely oblivious to their elephantine audience, continued to plot and plan, turning Damsel's humble abode into a full-blown criminal masterclass. After a lively discussion on the best practices of burglary. The thieves vanished into the night. Then they returned the next day and the day after to discuss their plans, thieving techniques, and murderous ways. Eventually, Damsel started to believe that the thieves were there to tutor her, and that she must transform into a ruthless, cold-hearted, and aggressive elephant. And transform she did. When her mahout or elephant keeper came to tend to her the next morning, Damsel picked him up with her trunk and gave him a good shake before plopping him down on the ground. Startled and bewildered, the mahout quickly scrambled away. Feeling quite proud of her assertiveness, Damsel treated everyone who approached her with the same enthusiasm. Nobody felt safe to go near her. The news quickly reached the king that Damsel had lost her marbles. The king was indeed puzzled, so he spoke to his wise adviser, who was the Bodhisattva. Go, sage, and find out what has got into Damsel that she is playing up like this. The Bodhisattva examined Damsel's face, and concluded she was not physically ill, so he spoke to her. And asked, "Did anyone tell you to behave like this?" "Oh yes, wise one," said the elephant. "Some robbers came into my stall every night and instructed me to be violent." Armed with this information, the bodhisattva informed the king that Damsel was physically fine, but had been corrupted by the evil conversations she had overheard. The king asked him. How to remedy the situation? The Bodhisattva suggested that a group of saintly sages sit near Damsel and talk about kindness and goodness. The king agreed, 
and the Bodhisattva arranged for the sages to sit near the elephant and discuss topics such as patience, love and mercy. After hearing these conversations, Damsel assumed that this was another lesson meant for her and decided to change her ways. And change she did. She became the gentle and good-natured elephant she once was. The king was delighted with the transformation. He asked the Bodhisattva if Damsel was truly cured. The Bodhisattva confirmed that thanks to the wise and good company she was keeping, Damsel had reverted to her old, kind self. He then recited a stanza, summarising the incident. When she heard the evil speech, Damsel rampaged, causing harm and breach. When good company returned once more, to be kind and gentle, she again swore. So heed this lesson, take it to heart, for wisdom and insight it shall impart. Surrounded by evil we may falter, lose sight, but with goodness around us we can do right. And that was the story of Damsel the Elephant from the Jataka tales in the Buddhist tradition. The Buddha, born Siddhartha Gautama, was a sage, spiritual teacher and the founder of Buddhism. He attained enlightenment and dedicated his life to teaching enlightenment and liberation from suffering. We tell more about his birth and enlightenment on our other podcast, Real Activity, which is like Story Nori for grown-ups and older kids. We call it A Little Time to Yourself, a message we think busy parents will understand. I will play you out with a little sample of our Buddha story, which you can find on our website, relaxivity.app, or in the usual podcast apps and players. For now, from me, Jana, see you soon at Story Nori. The Birth of Buddha and the Four Signs Hello, this is Jana, and welcome to Relaxivity. In this episode, I will tell you the story of the birth of Buddha. But first, what is the difference between a Buddha and the Buddha? Buddha is an ancient Sanskrit word that means a person who is awake. A Buddha is awake to the true nature of reality and free from the fog of daily illusions such as hate, greed and folly. To become a Buddha you must reach Nirvana, a transcendent state where there is no sense of self. It is a place of happiness and peace. When we talk about the Buddha, we are referring to Prince Siddhartha Gautama, who was born about two and a half thousand years ago. The birthplace of Gautama Buddha was the land of Shakya, which would now be in southern Nepal, along the border with India. He grew up to become a Buddha and the founder of the Buddhist religion. As you will hear in his early years, Siddhartha Gautama lived an opulent and pampered existence until, at the age of 29, he saw four signs that made him disgusted at the way of the world. He renounced his wealth and set out on his spiritual path of awakening. We retell his story retaining some of the flavour of the ancient texts. It was the time of the Midsummer Festival in the city of Kapilavastu in the foothills of the Himalayas. For the six days before the full moon, the people were celebrating. Day and night, the streets resounded with the ten noises. The sounds of elephants, horses, chariots, drums, dublars, 
sitars, singing, cymbals, gongs, and last but not least, people crying out. What are you waiting for? Eat, drink, be merry. On the day of the full moon, Queen Maya Devi, as beautiful as the water lily and as pure as the lotus, rose early, bathed in scented water, and gave four hundred thousand pieces of money to charity. In the evening time, she sampled the choicest foods while not touching a drop of strong drink. <laughs> 